Hey everybody, I'm Jim, the Tabletop Engineer, and in this episode, I want to make an Adventure Notes journal. I wanted this journal to look sort of like the field notes journals that you may or may not be familiar with, but they're basically a small three and a half by five and a half inch uh, notebook of lined or unlined paper. So what I did was I went into Inkscape and I just drew a box that is the dimensions, three and a half by five and a half. And this will allow me to add text and graphics and make sure that they're gonna be to scale. Now after I got my box drawn, I went and added some text. I called it the Adventure Notes, kind of like the Field Notes, and I used the Futura font, which is the font that the Field Notes uh, words are, are written in on those uh, particular journals. I also bolded it to make it stand out a little more. And then I added a little bit of space between each of the letters just to sort of spread the word adventure out. I kept going until I felt that it looked uh, appropriate. I could have used Inkscape for this, but I'm much faster in Pages. So what I did was I went into Pages, which is an Apple product, to create the image of a buckle that would sort of, you know, hold the book closed. And um, it's real simple. I, I started out with a rectangle for the band. I used um, curved corner, a, a box with curved edges or, or uh, uh, corners to, to create the buckle. I drew it out to size, made a copy of it, uh, colored it white. And then I'm, with that copy, I shrunk it down so that it simulated the ring of a, of a buckle. After that, I added a line across the top and bottom. Now, not a solid line. I went in and what I did was I turned this into a dotted line to simulate stitching on, uh, on a buckle. Now, right here, what I'm doing is I'm sending it to the back so the buckle sort of is in the front of it. Then I select the line and the dots. And then I made a copy of it and just moved it down to the bottom and also sent the dotted lines to the back. Think of layers. And in this case, the belt buckle will be in front of the dots. After that, I added some small little details like the dots inside, the stitching inside the buckle. Uh, once I got it lined up, I made a copy of it. And then I moved that copy down to the bottom. Next, I used another line to create the pointed, I guess, the end of the belt. Uh, I just drew it down to the midpoint and then made a copy of that line and flipped it vertically and uh, lined it up with its original partner. And it just creates the little pointed end uh, of the, uh, the belt loop. I went in and did some cleanup with the dots, um, just moving things around so that I could add dots uh, at an angle to follow the, uh, the angled line of the, uh, the sharp point of the belt here. And you'll just have to keep playing with this until you're happy with the end results. I'm never quite happy, so I just kept tinkering with it and tinkering with it until it finally looked good. Next, I uh, shrunk a small circle down, uh, colored it black for the hole and I added a, uh, another curved corner piece that uh, I did in white with a black border. And this simulates the little, you know, the sharp point that goes through the hole. I'm sure there's a technical word for it, but it's eluding me right now. Now that I uh, have the image of the buckle, uh, again, I went back and just cleaned it up, and then I imported it into Inkscape. Now, I can't go into this in great detail, but I converted it to what's called... Uh, an SVG. It's, it's a vector uh, image instead of a bitmap. I centered it in the, uh, in the book, raised the lettering up, and then I went and exported um, this image as an SVG file. Here it is in all black, but I changed it to purple. I changed the image and the text to purple because my laser cutter is going to use colors to determine what happens. With purple, that is an etch. Here I'm changing the outline to blue, which is, it could be a cut, but I'm basically using it so that I can line it up with the actual image of the notebook. 
I went in and saved this as adventurenotes.svg. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing. Next, I went to my actual Glowforge laser cutter, and I have the small notebook here. I placed it down on the surface, and I used some of these, um, they're like little pegs that fit into the grill work to hold it down. Uh, after I closed the lid, I went into the software, and I uh, selected the type of material. Now, this is not a standard material for the Glowforge, so I had to take the thickness of the material, which is 0.113 inches, and I imported the adventurenotes.svg file that I saved in Inkscape. The software for the uh, Glowforge processes the, uh, the image and then pulls it in at scale. And as you'll see right here, there it is. Now, the reason I made that box outline is so that I could drag it around the actual image. There's a camera in the Glowforge that takes a picture of what is on the workspace. So I'm able to line it up there. And then I just went in and I specify that the words in the image will be etched. And I chose to ignore the blue line. It won't do anything with it. And then I press the Go button, and it sends off the information and determines a time. Now, in this case, it was seven and a half, or almost eight minutes. And um, it does the calculations, and all I have to do is push the button that flashes when it's ready. And when I push it, the uh, Glowforge will start the process. Now, I have muted the, uh, the sound here because it is very, very loud. Um, it, but And I usually wear headphones or earphones when I'm down in there. I ran it at high speed because it took eight minutes, but I don't want you to sit here for eight minutes having to watch it. But as you can see, it etches the belt buckle, and then it goes up and does the word notes, and then it finally does the word adventure, and it is done. The final thing I did with the adventure notes was I glued in this little manila envelope in the back. It's about three inches by five inches, so it's just a little bit smaller than the back, but it's a perfect fit. I just took a little wood glue, smeared it in the four corners and in the center, pressed it down, and then put some weights on top to let the glue dry. And now I have a little pocket in the back. All right, there you go. One Adventure Notes journal in brown. I liked this one so much, I went and did one in black. Same laser etching. Uh, it's a little golden brown, and it looks really good straight on. Now, the, the cover's a little glossy, so at certain angles, it's a little hard to see. But as you can see, it turned out just fine. And uh, with this one, I glued the little pocket in the back. Can't hold much, but you never know what you'll need at the gaming table. If you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button. I also invite you to come join me over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. I post other videos, photos, commentary on what I'm currently working. I answer questions, and it's just a fun place to hang out with fellow crafters and uh, see what they're making and hear what they want to talk about. So come join me over there. All right, that's it. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I will be back next week with another video. Everybody, take care.